those of you that are sad because you don't have the crazy PC and you need you need Baldur's Gate for your Xbox. When is Baldur's Gate coming to Xbox? We did get some release information for Baldur's Gate coming to Xbox. Yep. Uh, it will be later this year. It is coming to both the Series X and S. Um, with some concessions, apparently. With some concessions. And you brought this up. This is big. So the X, it will be the same. Yep. But on the S, we will no longer have the ability to do split-screen co-op on that console. Now, you brought up that this was a big deal. And can you explain to them why this is such a big thing? Yeah, so this is kind of a big deal because traditionally when we're talking about the X versus S split and what Xbox and Microsoft does as far as their games go is they, they don't allow, um, like it's, it's part of the stipulation that if you're developing a game for X and S, they have to have the same feature set. And the things that you can have some general concessions are on like graphics, frame rate, the stuff that you would expect from like a lesser system. Mm -hmm. But as far as core gameplay elements go, they've never allowed a, a game a developer to uh, diverge from having full pieces of content or full pieces of mechanics or gameplay stuff like split screen versus not having split screen. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they're allowing the S version to not need split screen, but they're still going to have it on X is huge because they have never allowed anything like this in the past where they have been able to diverge on a gameplay mechanic like that. Which is, or, or like a, a full on mechanic. A gameplay like function. A gameplay function. Like that yeah. is something that traditionally they have never allowed to be changed. Um, but like graphics, like I said, and stuff like that can be because that's the hardware limitations. Um, the hardware limitation we're running into right now is the X just cannot do split screen at a reliable frame rate that doesn't cause a bunch of problems. So they have allowed Baldur's Gate to go ahead and release without it, setting a precedent that could be interesting to see other de devs argue down the line can they do this? Is this something that more devs are going to be allowed to do, having sort of like being able to break certain parts off of the game? And this gets into a longer discussion of, does this also mean that we are going to start seeing games that don't release on the S due to hardware limitations down the line? Because Phil has already stated that they don't see this going the phone way where you upgrade every couple of years and the prices reduce on your consoles. They might go down a little bit, but we're probably just going to see more generations tacked onto the Xbox line instead of a full generational jump, meaning that they might essentially only have uh, some games on the S, and to get the full experience, you're going to need the X or the Z or the whatever else beyond that. I'm curious, because like, Kotaku's got a thing here where they're talking about Xbox leaning into the S and saying they're not getting rid of the S. They're not stopping support of it. They won't get like rid that. of it. No, um, no, no. The S is obviously kind of that, that mid-range console. Why do you think that, I mean, given that they've never done this before and given the hardware limitations of the S, why do you think they're so focused on keeping the S relevant? It is, it is the... It is the lowest entry point that someone could get into the Xbox ecosystem beyond having a TV or a phone, and phones are almost a thousand dollars sometimes, um, that gets you into that ecosystem. So like that 250, 275, whatever price point it is right now for the S, super low, real easy to get in the house, real easy to get for your kids that don't really, you know, necessarily like need the X or the disc drive or like any of that other stuff or the fancy graphics right off the bat. Um, but it's it's the entry point and like we're seeing this they're what they're trying to do right now is they're i feel like they're trying to lower the entry point by getting things into samsung tvs and having them built into hardware already and having you just have game pass actively in your television that then becomes the lowest point of uh like they're saying in chat accessibility so like the s is the lowest or the cheapest way, I guess, is a better to way to To get somebody it. into that Xbox. To get somebody in that ecosystem until it's just Game Passes on your TV, and then that becomes the lowest point to get people into. Well, and I, we had talked about this on the show a little while ago about the TV issue, right? Because one of the things I've seen with smart TVs is the problem with smart TVs is because of the size of the TV and the way that they're built. Um, from a hardware perspective, if you've ever used a smart TV and not had an external box, mm -hmm. right? Like at my house, for example, I use Apple TV. Yeah. Right, so I actually have the Apple TV puck 
It is outside of my TV. Mm -hmm. I don't use any of these smart TV features because I find that after basically one or two software upgrades that it just, they chug. Yeah, that's fair. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, the software is not keep like the hardware does not keep up with the software on smart TVs. The fire the fire stick that we have on one TV in the office versus the the smart TV that we have in the living room. After a few updates, yeah, there have been a couple apps that have chugged. The other thing that I really don't like is a lot of the TVs just like randomly will remove apps. Like Twitch is not on Samsung TVs right now, at least not the model that I have anymore, and they have they they just have they just kind of disappear whereas like those those you know the boxes that you hook up to your tv tend to want to support as many apps as possible so they stay around for a lot longer well because they're external they're built with a single function in mind they're not on your samsung tv okay so then it must have just gotten booted off of my model um which so again like, like i've seen the same thingy where it's like and also you tend to have less uh, customization as to what apps are on the tv Mm -hmm. Right, like on my Apple TV, I can add a uh, an app, like I can add Hulu, or I can delete Hulu. Yeah, I can delete YouTube. I can add YouTube. All those stuff. And then somebody in the and this is this is the thing that that people keep bringing up, and this is why we're talking about accessibility in consoles and TVs. And this is why I've always been kind of like, I don't know when they're going to be able to get to the Game Pass in your TV function, because I think we're still a little ways away from that. Mm -hmm. um, because again, people who have smart TVs and stuff like that, they don't want to upgrade components. People in the chat are saying they have upgradable components now. I don't know many general consumers that want to pull their 65 inch flat screen off the wall, pop open the back and swap out chips. You know what I mean? Like you're asking for a lot in that case from the general consumer, yeah. right? I think it's why a lot of console owners own consoles. Yeah. If you want to be able to swap components and upgrade and do stuff, you buy a PC. Yeah, and then one then that's like even on the consoles, like for the people that want to do that, the hardware slot, the 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 hard drive slot is usually super accessible. It's real easy to just like go out, buy the new Xbox hard drive or whatever, slap mm -hmm. it on in there and call it a day. But that's Whereas, it. But that's it. Yeah, you're not tearing it apart. You're not having to like dust out your components you're and change your CPU and you're reapply not, yeah, exactly. You're not changing the processor. You're yeah. not changing RAM chips. You know, you're nope. not doing any of that when you're a console owner. And I think that you take that. I'm not doing that concept even further when you're talking about a TV. Yeah. I just. They can try and be like, we're gonna swap the guts on your TV or buy a new TV. I think most consumers are gonna be like. Buying a new TV. Looks like looks like this TV is going in the bedroom, and this TV is being upgraded. <laughs> you know, I mean, and the thing about a TV is, it's one of those of those hardware pieces that I expect my television, and maybe it's because I don't use the smart TV features. I expect my TV to last me roughly five to seven years. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I expect out of it. You know, um, I don't want to be replacing my TV every two years. You know, my TV turns into an input-only device. That's basically what mine is now. Again, I almost never use the smart TV functions. I know my TV has them, but I just don't use them. Um, that's the point behind cloud gaming like Stadia, Luna. Again, looking at what happened with LOL Stadia, as the chat puts it, I, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. I don't know if cloud gaming's where it's at right now. Like... Who's, who, who here has been gaming long enough in that ecosystem to remember on live? Oh, any of y'all out there remember on live? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, was the, that was the first one that tried to dip its toe into it. Um, Planned Obsolescence says no, you get, and every time a new version comes out, kind of. Um, honestly, I love it. So, actually, that's a